Last week, we lost a very important person to our family. We lost Miss Maxine Beam. Maxine was almost 99 years old. And she's been an icon in this sport ever since she walked into that first time in the ring. She was very important to us. So many people, including myself, I have some very fond memories of Maxine. Um, so I was looking for someone that, that knew Max very well, and I found somebody up here that we all know and love, Elaine Mitchell, a handler in her own right. She's done incredible things, but she worked for Maxine for seven years as a youngster. So today in the interview chair, we have Elaine Mitchell. Hi everybody, today we have Elaine Mitchell on the interview chair. If anybody didn't know, Elaine was a longtime assistant of the famous Maxine Beam. How are you today, Elaine? I'm fine, Well, how are you doing? I'm good, it's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, long time no see you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> All right, well you're comfortable, are you ready to begin? I'm ready to go. Okay, before we start into, uh, I want to talk about Max. First, I want everybody to catch up on you. Tell me how you got into dogs, Elaine. Well, I grew up on a farm, so there was lots of dogs, horses, pigs, cats, what, what name it. And I always loved it. And when I was young, we used to go into the sportsman show. In Toronto. Um, Where was your farm? No, no, in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Okay. Let's and because my dad was an avid sportsman, as was I. And uh, the dog show people always had a big display there to advertise the upcoming dog show. Okay. And that's where I met Bill Dawson. Oh, Bill Dawson. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Back in the day. A Canadian yeah. judge. Yes. So then when we moved into the city, uh, every time there was a dog show. Which city is this? Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Oh, right into Prince Albert. Okay, sorry. Okay. We moved into town, and whenever the dog show came, I was a total annoyance to everybody was, that was there. Um, I'm sure people like Pat Tripp and Paul Bohr and the likes could have, like, killed me. But nonetheless, I hung around and annoyed them. <laughs> How and, old were you, Elaine? Oh, I was probably 13, 14. Okay. And then... Um, when I went to high school, I started taking driving lessons, and I took driving lessons, not from, but with a lady called Mary Oliver. And she said, I have Maltese. Do you want me to come and, come and help me brush them? And I said, oh, okay. So <laughs> that's how that affiliation started. And then a couple of summers, I went to work at a kennel in Calgary, and they had an assortment of dogs. They had Irish setters. They had Vigilas. That was their main breed. Um, they had the odd cocker. Um, they had some Puli. And they were refugees from Hungary. And he, yeah, and he was rather from the royalty, I think. And when he came over here, he made a living training hunting dogs. And it was really educational. And I worked there for two summers, and that was how I got my first purebred dog, an Irish Setter. Oh, wow. Good. Yes, which is my favorite breed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just too old and tired to run with them now. <laughs> okay, so what happened so, from there? So I got the Irish Setter, and Mary Oliver and I started going to dog shows and took my old Irish setter and a couple of Maltese, and we did pretty well, you know, as well as could be. Um, the first show I showed my Irish setter at, I went fourth in the group. Oh, wow. And, that's, that's you know, started. that was bad because it was like hooked from then on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as if I hadn't already been. But um, so then Bill Dawson knew that I was really, really interested in dogs so he said why don't you write to this lady she comes up on the okanagan circuit every year and so i wrote to maxine beam <laughs> and she and she said come out and meet me on the okanagan circuit and we'll see how you do 
So I went out there and she had this old pet dog called Whitey Bean, who had more hair, he was a toy poodle, more hair than any standard poodle you could imagine. Maxine was big on hair. <laughs> and so she put me to brushing Whitey Bean, which I did religiously every day. And I guess she thought I'd be all right. And um, so she couldn't take me right then, but she sent me to work in a kennel for Dawn and Eileen Burlant in Portland, Oregon. They had boxers and they had lovely boxers that went back to Bangaway. And um, so I spent a year there and went, then I went to Maxine and the rest is history. I wanna hear all about that history. <laughs> <laughs> so any, anyway, off I went to Maxine's and it was culture shock for the little farm girl from Saskatchewan, I can sure. tell you. So where, um, where was Maxine? Maxine was in Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. And for the first couple of years or three years, I lived beside a grooming shop where her friends had a pet grooming shop. So I learned to do a lot of pet grooming stuff and stuff like that there between helping Maxine out on the weekends and then going, going out to her kennel, which was run by her friend. And um, I learned to do like show poodles. And Ed Ivan taught me to shave poodle feet. <laughs> <laughs> what year really, was this? Oh my God, when did I go down to work for Maxine? It was 19, I got out of high school in 64. So it would have been 65, 66. So, I was and one. then I, pardon, you were one. <laughs> I was one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so I worked for her for seven years and it was an education. Oh, I'm sure. It was an education like people don't get now. She was mean as a snake. <laughs> um, I cried the whole first three years and everybody said there there it's okay she'll get over it and she always did <laughs> and but I learned to do things right you know yeah. um, there was no whining or saying I can't or whatever um, you did it and you did it right and you couldn't quit because you'd like kill you or <laughs> sell you to another handler or something you know so i'd be there crying my eyes out brushing poodles you know and of course to maxine every hair was sacred and if she was coming along back to the setup or back into the grooming room and there was hair in the brush i'd have that hair out of the brush and in my pocket so fast <laughs> i'm sure she thought i never brushed a hair out of the dog <laughs> So, so okay, so what from? <clears throat> and what, do you did you know any of the background about Max? Did she ever teach you any of that? Like who, where did where she began? She started in Cockers, and I don't know exactly how she belong uh, how she started, but she had Cockers for a long time, and then she got into Poodles, and I know she bred Cockers and Poodles. And in the beginning, she kept her dogs at because she lived in the city of Fort Worth. She kept her dogs at her vets. She had two vets and she used to go there every day. And then after I'd been there for a couple of years, she bought a lovely place in the country and I moved out there with her. Oh, good. So, yeah, so that was good. So, um, you, you mentioned um, when, I, when I brought this up to you, 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 you mentioned Clara Alford to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stupidest mistake ever of my life. <laughs> um, hang, on and I, hang on a second. I, just gotta, I gotta get Maxine and Clara were really, really, really close friends. Um, they would set up together at shows. And Before we start the story, can you just explain who Clara Alford was to people that don't understand? <laughs> Clara Alford was the queen of Pekingese at that time practically the queen of the toy group yeah. she won the group she won the group at the garden with the with the venerable's um pekingese chick to son of caversham she won the uh, best of the show at the garden 
Yeah. She led the group at the garden with a chihuahua whose name I can't remember, but everybody knew Chick the son. Oh, for sure. He was, he, he actually was had some Canadian ties like, too as well. Yes, absolutely, to Bill and Nigel. Yeah. And um, anyway, um, Maxi or er, um, Clara only showed little dogs, but before I went for, to work for Maxine, she showed a lot of big dogs. She sh loved boxers, showed lots of them, and showed shepherds. She loved shepherds too. And I she showed, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she showed shepherds for Lang Scarda. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Lang, Lang Scarda became very near and dear to me because he was always saving me from some disaster. <laughs> he would always say, Don't do that, it won't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Maxine won't like it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, Mac, uh, Ed, or Lang was always very, very kind to me. So, Let's anyway, go back to Clara. Finish yeah, back to, Cla to back to back to Clara. I'm easily sidetracked. <laughs> um, one time, Maxine chose to not go on the Florida circuit. And she said, well, Clara's, Clara's looking for somebody. Do you want to go with Clara? Well, I was terrified of Maxine, but I was even more terrified of Clara. Um, Clara was Navajo, and her husband, Al, who was a deer, used to be um, a rum runner in, oh. <laughs> back, in the, back in the days when Oklahoma was dry. And then when they opened it up, Al was unemployed. So it was up to Clara. But um, when Clara got mad, clear the decks. So I, w I was like petrified. And so I opted to not go, which was probably the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. Yeah. You know, and, and she really was a kind person. But I hadn't been down there that long, and it was just a little bit overwhelming. But when Clara died, she left all her, her jewelry. She was famous for her Navajo jewelry. She had necklaces. She bra had bracelets. She had belts. And it was worth a fortune then. I can't imagine what it's worth now. Anyway, she left it all to Maxine, and Maxine's house was robbed. And that was the closest I ever saw Maxine come to cry because she really, really loved Claire. And that meant so much to her, that stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I hope it burns a hole in the skin of the people that have it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so any, anyway. But but we had lots of good times with Claire and lots of laughs. And I went to, I went to visit them at their house one time with Maxine. And Al was sitting in his chair, and he says, "You see that picture up there?" And I said, "Yes." And it was one of these typical Indian pictures with headdress and feathers and the whole hoo-ha. And he looks at me and he says, "That's the meanest Indian that ever lived." And I looked at him like, and he said, "That's Geronimo," <laughs> like I should. <laughs> of course, I'd heard of Geronimo, but. Of course. But you know, there were so many characters back then, you mm -hmm. know, before the AKC said we must, you know, be like <laughs> little cookie cutters. So t can, can you, um, t you touched on Lang. Can you, t can you yeah. touch on Lang and Max's relationship at all for me? They were very, very, very close friends. Um, he, at shows, he would always come over and visit, whether he was judging or not. And even then, when he was judging, he would come over and visit. And they would talk about shepherds and things like that. So, and just talk about dogs in general. And um, you ever tell cheer, you me, cheer me up when need me. <laughs> <laughs> Did Max ever tell you about her mentors who were really important to the, that brought her into dogs? No, um, Forest Hall was one, mm -hmm. and there were some fellows that showed for Forest Hall, and I cannot remember their names, but I think, you know, she followed them about a lot. But kind of at that time, when she started out, I think Texas was kind of like, learned by the seat of your pants. Oh, yeah. So. Well, she got good at it. <laughs> oh, she sure did. <laughs> Very good, and got some lovely clients yeah. too. 
So, well, they were lo they were lovely because if they weren't, they wouldn't stay long. She never showed Pekingese because she didn't like the Pekingese people, which was why she <laughs> no, which was why uh, which was why she says, well, I like the breed, I just don't like the people, which is why she wanted me to go with Clara to learn Pekingese. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what? Did she ever tell you what her favorite shows were? Uh, Dallas Fort Worth shows. Yeah. Yeah, Fort Worth was always. She was a member of the club. I think I and, the, the red jackets. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she always showed at that show. But she was instrumental <laughs> in other things. And I think I think um, what is her name? I'm thinking back. Okay, we'll come back to that. <laughs> um, oh, what is her name? That. Um, Dorothy Nichols. Dorothy Nichols. Oh, Dorothy. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. She and Dorothy. She and Dorothy Nichols were good friends. And um, another character, my God. Oh, absolutely, and so much fun, you know. I and didn't realize it. until you told me that they both did the the circuits in BC. I didn't realize. Well, uh, Maxine did the circuit in BC, which was where all the California handlers came up. So I met them before I'm, we went on the Texas circuit. And Dorothy Nichols used to come up on the Saskatchewan circuit. Oh, wow, Saskatchewan. And, yes, and she had standard poodles, and she showed them both in obedience and in confirmation. So... That was, but that was before I really sort of knew who Dorothy Nichols was. She was just one of these other people I followed around. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's, let's, I'm going to bounce around a bit. Your, okay. men, your mentors, anyway, who are your mentors? Obviously, Max was. Obviously, Max. See, and my parents who were farm, so they were animal people. And you learn pretty quick that as long as there was animals, there was no time off because they always came first. Um, who are some other people? Barbara Humphreys, of course. I worked for a short. I worked for a short time for Barbara. Um, in between other things, um, who else? I wrote on the list. Barbara Humphreys, Pat Tripp. Oh. And I worked. For Pat, I worked for Pat Tripp for a little bit. Now, did you tell me earlier that Max and Pat were quite close as well? Max, Max and Pat were very good friends. Again, very tight. And um, hey, some of these new viewers or our listeners might not remember who Pat Tripp is. Can you just give us give us a quick rundown? Pat Pat Tripp was a handler from Vancouver, BC, mm -hmm. and she was one of the top handlers of her time. Anywhere, uh, anywhere, anywhere, and and she was very powerful in the Pacific Northwest in the states. And she was always at odds with the AKC over something, um, <laughs> but nonetheless, she did she did really really well. Well, two of her uh, most famous apprentices are Tim Brazier, yeah, yeah, and and Susan Hillman, who we all loved, yeah, and we all loved Tim. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so they they were close. I did, I did. So did you spend time with Pat as well then when you were working with Max? Maxine. Um, no, when I worked with Max, I worked with Max, but Maxine would come up to judge every now and then, and she and Pat would get together and go to dinner, and oh. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So they all, they always kept in touch. When did Maxine retire from handling it and, and start judging? Oh boy, I have to remember. That was when I came back up here to show dogs. You were until her retirement? Pardon? Were you working for Maxine until her retirement? Absolutely. If she was still showing, I'd probably still be working for her. <laughs> because I'd be afraid to quit. <laughs> but Mac Maxine was always very kind to me in many ways. And she was one of the most loyal people you would ever meet in your life. Yeah. Um, every summer, she this was before the age of the big campaign, she would take the summer off and she would send me up to Canada with the dogs that she'd start showing in the fall. So I had dogs to bring to Canada and experiment with that, you know, most people would never be able to get their hands on. Sure. So, and that, and that was really, really wonderful. I got to try out everything I learned. And that was good for the dogs too, because they knew. Uh, dogs ab the yeah, ab absolutely. She always said, bring them back trained. <laughs> There you go. Brandon Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
So you, what year did she retire? Do you remember that now? Eh, no, but I worked for her for seven years. I'm, I'm not good with numbers and years and stuff like that. It kind of all goes by, but. <laughs> so you so. Did you keep in contact with her after, after you, or after she yeah, 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 we would stay in touch from time to time. I'd phone her every once in a while to shriek about, you know, the judging of whatever, wherever. And she'd say, there, there, it's okay. They're not all geniuses and you can't be accountable for how they point the finger. <laughs> <laughs> With Maxine, it was like very much a business. Mm -hmm. You know, you looked after them, you trained them, you made them happy, you made them show, you did their job. Judges were supposed to do their job. And that was it. I was supposed to remind you about a story about Ramona Van Court. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, one time when I was first down there. You have to, yeah, you have yeah, to tell people I, who all these people are because. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Ramona, Ramona and her husband were very, very famous judges. And Ramona was a bit abrupt. And. I remember we were on the Texas circuit, which was a whole world in itself, and came to Dallas and Fort Worth, which was like kind of the climax, the two big shows. And we were in Fort Worth and Maxine was stuck in something and I had to show one of the poodle specials. And the drill is you always tell the ring steward and you tell the judge, the handler's coming, can I please get to the end of the line? And everybody would say, oh, pardon? <laughs> we <still laughs> and <all> the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the judges would all say, oh, that's okay, yada, yada, yada. So I went in. And I think Maxine might have not remembered who was judging. So I went in and did my little spiel. And she ripped a strip off of me from one end to the other. <laughs> and I was showing this little toy poodle bawling my eyes out I mean she was really evil and you should never speak to the judge and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that I was like devastated that I'd made a full paw and uh, Maxine never did come so I had to show through which was probably 15 toy poodle specials at the time and um, between Fort Worth and Dallas was Margie Tranchin's big party well Margie Tranchin was Maxine's main client and we all went to the party and Mrs. Van Court was there, of course. Well, Maxine went up to her and absolutely shredded her. Don't you ever you speak to my assistant like that? Whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, in front of God and everybody, she told her how the cow ate the cabbage pretty much. Um, but if you were a good friend of Maxine or if she liked you, she always had your back. There was no... Um, even if she would yell at you every now and then, she would still have your back. I believe that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Like to know her, obviously, by showing to her, I didn't know her. Yeah. Person, though. I, I spoke to her a couple times, actually, yeah. after she reti retired from judging, just to check on her. Um, yeah. Uh, but she was one of my most favorite to show to. I always... Yes. She was always the same. She was... She, she was point blank and straightforward. And she yeah. always asked how old the dog was. Yeah. She was always, she was always this, <laughs> I, I love showing to her. Yeah, yeah. She really knew dogs. You know, there's, there's no question. One of the most knowledgeable people in the world. And I just learned so much from her. You know, it was, it's, it was amazing. It was like, an experience nobody will ever have the fortune to have now, that's for sure. Were, were there other assistants? Well, obviously there were. Do you know of any of the other apprentices that worked under her? Um, yes. One of, uh, well, Timmy Brazier worked for her for a while. Well, well, yeah, while Maxine was trying to get a green card for me to go down. And, um, but her other assistants didn't end up showing dogs she had one that was a german shepherd breeder bred lovely shepherd she married a veterinarian that was that and the other one ended up being a veterinarian oh that's good so, so that's okay <laughs> did max breed any dogs afterwards but, no 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 she pretty much had bred quit breeding toy poodles 
um, when I started working for her. I think Whitey Beam was one of the last. What were, what were some of the dogs that she showed that we would all remember and know? Oh, she had a lovely, lovely miniature poodle called Momart's Bartat by Jingo, who was a beautiful dog. She did a lot, a lot of winning with him. And then she had another, another bitch called Sally, and I can't remember Sally's name. Um, what was Sally's name? I don't know, but she was beautiful. She was really nice. And they were both from England. And um, when England sort of led the world in, in miniature poodles, um, she had this beautiful mini wire haired dachshund called Wee Jenny. And again, I don't remember Jenny's kennel name. And Roy Lee Murray was showing at the same time okay. this little miniature dachshund called Little John. And Little John and we, we Jenny used to duke it out at every show, and they were both <laughs> lovely. Both lovely. Maxine showed quite a few dachshunds, actually. And um, she showed some nice corgis for a lady called Weta Parsons. And um, what else? Well, you know, that was in the age where you didn't have a top special that hung around for several years. You know, there, was, there wasn't the big campaign now where you build up a year and then you go for a year. Um, and Maxine always used to say, I get tired of them after a year. <laughs> I, th I think she showed Jingle the most of, um, oh, she, sh she specialed some toy poodles for, um, Dan and Betty Jo Gallus in Fort, in, no, in Dallas. Um, and she had some nice little ones from them. And she always had a special for them, but they always were focused on class dogs. You know, it was getting a champion, getting a champion. And if you were going well, the special could go to. Um, she showed millions of Maltese and Yorkies. Um, what the was odd minute the size of her string? Oh, we'd go to a show with 15 dogs or so. Uh, yeah. yeah, everything was hair. Mm -hmm. um, Maltese, Yorkies, Poodles, um, Shelties, which, uh, which is a breed I love, um, Silky Terriers. If it had hair and it fit in the van, we showed it. <laughs> well, you you when you were, were when you went ventured out on your own and started showing dogs you became very famous for your hair obviously yeah bichons how did, did she guide you in bichons at all too no bichons weren't recognized Maybe when yeah. when she was handling and i showed carries for a lady called irene smith in winnipeg who was linda smith's mother okay yeah, yeah. and Irene taught me a lot about grooming, about grooming terriers. And um, I sort of adapted what I saw people doing in the States, what Irene did with the carries, and just a few other things. And then, you know, you experiment. Do I want it to look like this? Do I want it to look like that? Is this what Bichons should look like? <laughs> I was just a kid, but I can still remember the pictures in the magazines of... of yeah. One after another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a zillion of those. I'll tell you. <laughs> For Helen Casper, she had some really nice ones. So, so back, back to Max. Um, yeah. Well, she's retired now, and she's she's uh, judging. And you guys stay in touch. Did you, yeah. ever, did you ever show to her much yourself, or was that just welcome? Oh, I showed to her every now and then, whenever she came up on a panel where I was going. I should, but I, again, I was always terrified. It wouldn't be fat enough. It would be too fat. It would have too much hair, not enough hair, you know. But it was, yet again, a learning experience. And I remember once I showed a Cavalier to her in the Bread by Exhibitor class. And she looked at the dog and she put him up and she gave him best of winners and some really nice famous dog won the breed. And, but when we were getting the picture taken, she said to me, this is really a good one, isn't it? And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest compliment in the world. <laughs> and then I used to write for a magazine called Royal Spaniels. And I used to write an article every weekend, every month. 
And one day she said to me, I read your articles and I'm really proud of you. And I thought, oh. <laughs> well, that would mean the world. Uh, oh my God, that meant the world to me. Yeah. So unfortunately, with the passing of Max, was there'll be a lot of people reminiscing, and that's why I asked you about this. Right. Uh, what do you think she would think of the dog shows today? It wasn't that long ago that she retired, but... No, I know. Um, I would think, like the rest of us, that were, there would be a free, few really good ones and a lot of track. Um, yeah. She wouldn't have a lot of patience with the people who didn't put the time in and the effort in to make their dogs look the part and show the part. She was the queen of conditioning. You know, everything had to be in the right way. If it was too skinny, its front was everywhere. If it's too fat, its front was somewhere else. She was front phobic. Um, it had to be in the right weight. It had to be in the right hair. You had to move it exactly so. Um, I think she would not be so impressed with a lot of the drama in the ring. She would like she would like people to show dogs. I used to love to watch. Well, I watched her a lot. I used to love to watch Frank Sabella and Pat Tripp and Barbara Humphreys, and their styles were all so different. Like Frank was full of flair. Frank and Pat Tripp had both been dancers in their first lives. And Pat, Frank was full of flair. He could make them look lovely. He could make them showy, as could Pat Tripp. Pat Tripp could sell anything in the ring, I swear to God. She'd go in and she'd have this tragic little thing on the lead, and she looked at that thing like it was about to go best of breed at the garden and everybody fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Maxine was one of those that would screw their little feet to the floor and bend their little legs into shape and nobody could ever find anything wrong with them. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was, they were such different styles. Barbara was kind of in between. I love to watch Barbara. Um, you know, there's so many different people out there with so many different styles that, oh, for sure. you know, to learn, but those are, those are four of the ones that I really watched a lot. You know, your mentors don't have to be people that sit down and tell you stuff. You just have to pay attention. And I, and I think that's another pe problem. People don't pay attention. <laughs> It's interesting how you talk about her attention to detail and the dog she showed and conditioned whatnot. She was like that too when she was judging because I guess yes. all the, the line on the table where we had to have the dog exactly there or right. if we were judging outside, that shade line had to be just enough that she was inside the shade as well. Like right. being at the Arizona National, I was a few dogs behind and right. the dog out in the sun. Back that, why do, why do I have to stand out in the sun and look at these dogs? Back them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can hear now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one's listening to me, Will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> I had my, my I had um, a dog I was special at the time, which is the National, and his uh -huh. daddy. But I also had Beef in the Veterans Dog Class, and, 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 and Max had been a fan of Beef. Yeah. She gave him the veteran's dog class. I went back in on Addie, and my dad was there, so he stayed. He showed beef in the breed. So she's right. going over my going over my special. She said, "Who's back there with the old dog?" I said, "That's my father." So when it came time to make the cut, she put a few of us up front. Then she started screaming, "Dad, Dad, bring him up here!" <laughs> 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 See, you've got some good Maxine stories oh, no, too. It was great. Yeah. I, it was wonderful to me. I, did, I had such a great time showing to her. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't piss her off then. <laughs> no, I tried not to. Whenever, <laughs> whenever there was a dog that was questionable and I couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah. You always question that handler. Like, where was this? Why, who, well, how, why is this dog like this? I was. I had done a nose on a dog one time. I yeah. think it was actually Colin that showed it for me in the breed. 
and it was a liver nose. And Colin yeah. said, well, it's Will's dog. So when, I got, when she got to my dog, she said, I won't kick you out if you tell me what you used on his nose. I couldn't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I remember one time we showed a dog, and his color was quite questionable. And she didn't want to show it like that. But Maxine was kind of by the rules, you know, so she would never buy a dog. <laughs> so... So she got this some kind of conduction that wasn't really dye, and then she made me do it because she never died a dog. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so. You remember the last? You remember when you the last time you showed or last time you worked for? You remember the last day? Yes, it was sad. Yeah. And she sent me home with a van load of dogs to show up here. And it, yeah, it was, it was kind of like the end of an era. Yeah. Yeah. Seven years, that, that's unheard yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, you just, back then, I think. It was more the norm, but. Yeah, hand, handlers back then, if you worked for a handler, that's what you did. And at that time, Assistant handlers were licensed as well as handlers. And so you were licensed to your handler. And I can <laughs> and I can remember when we went to the garden one time and Maxine had a special. It was okay. And she had this beautiful dog in the classes that she just loved. Well, she went best of winter. Colin's making me laugh. <laughs> Anyway, she went west of winners with this dog she just loved, and she wanted to stay on him for the breed and wanted me to show the special. She had to find the AKC rep to get permission to drop the special and show the class dog. Yeah, so she did a little scrambling, and it all worked out. But um, Did she end up winning? No, she didn't win the breed, but best of winners. So, yeah. But no, she really loved this dog. He was a pretty little dog, too. So, he was a Jingo son, I think. So. What do you think, um, if, you, if, if you could go back and talk to, the, say, the 20-year-old Maxine, do you think there would be any advice she'd want to give you then or, or, or advice that, let's say, say you went back before you, you worked for Maxine, what advice would you give yourself? What advice would I give myself? Um, to pay more attention what everybody else, to what all the other handlers were doing. I didn't get to watch as much as I liked mm -hmm. um, because she ran a pretty tight ship and there was always something to do with 15 hairy dogs. Well, for sure. But, but, and, she, and she didn't mind me going watching other stuff. It just was always something to do. The other thing she would have told me is like counter pennies. Maxine was extremely good with money. So I think she would have lectured me a bit on that. Um, but I think she would still have, you know, made me walk the straight and narrow. Um, styles have changed and haircuts on the dogs have changed and, and things have changed, which Maxine was aware of and was, um, you know, she wasn't backward about being forward at all. But I think she really drilled the basics into people. You know, when you had to do the basics before you could do anything else. You know, you had to learn to brush a poodle out before you could spray it up. Did she ever tell you what her favorite breed was? Um, well, she really had a fond spot for cockers, but I think toy poodles probably. What she showed then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was a sad day when we lost Max. So. No, it sh it sure was. You know, I mean, she was ninety nine, but still, it was a shock. You know. Yeah, so. well, we all have such good stories about her, so I imagine you have some great stories and great memories. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they all. I just have to remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you shared some of them with us today. Though. Yeah, yeah. So. For that, uh, your time. Um, yeah. Is there any last thing you want to say about Max before we call it? Mm -hmm. 
Well, there'll just no, be nobody else like her. There'll be nobody else. No, it was a whole, not only it was Maxine, but it was a whole different era. And like I said, assistants were tied to the people they worked for. If you wanted to be a handler, you were an assistant and you were an assistant for, till the handler said you could be a handler. And you could either handle for, or you could either work for a, um, a handler or you could work for a kennel. Um, and people just were more focused on reality then. You know, they were focused on what made a good dog. Um, I show quite a bit in Europe where there are very few handlers, but the people that show are quite a bit the same. You know, they're more fo focused on ba basic dogs, breeding good dogs, um, not so much on the run for top dog or drama or still well, there was plenty then because you know, <laughs> there were characters there were Pat Tripp there was Lina Biscat there was Frank Sabella <laughs> there was all these wonderful wonderful people you know you sit on your stool and set up brushing poodles watching them all so oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so but but no I think I think it's the time that we won't see again which is sad I hope I hope that everybody today sort of gets back into it's about the dog's mode you know not about it's about the ribbons mode yeah i, I agree i agree yeah okay so, well thank you elaine thank you okay thanks talk. thanks will and we'll <laughs> talk to you again yes thank you it was great okay okay bye-bye okay. bye, -bye. bye now Thank you, Elaine. Uh, I'm sure that was a difficult talking about Max, but it was some lovely memories, and we all we all were thrilled to hear them. And, and uh, it was nice to to listen to you talk so fondly about your mentor. Uh, thank you again for your time, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed that interview. I know I did. It uh, made me think back on a lot of things that I knew about Max and that I didn't know about Max. So I'm really thrilled that we did that. Uh, well, till next week, guys. Talk to you soon.